This isn't a review of these products, but I am excited about them. I've been waiting to get my hands on them since I saw how this all works at NAB. And I think that I just want to get this out there, show these to you, and I'm gonna be putting these to the test on a load of shoots over the next uh, two or three months. In order for me to properly ascertain how good a product is, I do like to do that, but I find that uh, often I lose the initial spark of excitement which perhaps I, uh, I have now because I've just got them and I want to share that with you with that spark of excitement and then later on you can check in and see how that is working out for me and whether the excitement was uh, justified. So to start with, I'm going to start actually on this side, the Ceremonic K9. These are not brand brand new and you've been able to get hold of them for a little while. Basically, let's open this up and show you, they are audio recorders but they're also little mic packs. That is one of them. I have uh, two in this uh, package, so you get uh, two transmitters, and then you also get the receiver unit as well, just here. Now the, the recorder part of this, as obviously these are mic packs and they transmit, is interesting. I will just have a little caveat here and say, if you're in America, you're in a weird place. Um, the whole being able to broadcast and record 32-bit uh, float stuff, uh, it, that, that is your particular quirk. The fact is that the system can do it, uh, and it's just the region locking for the people in the US. I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna look at this as if it can do all the things that it can legitimately do. So we have broadcasting with UHF, and that is better in a lot of respects than broadcasting from the likes of all of the 2.4 gig systems that we have, like the one that I'm wearing just now. It's great, it's small, it's uh, easy to use, it works in that 2.4 gig um, bandwidth. This works on bandwidth which is dedicated to this kind of thing. So it is going to be, in a lot of ways, better and more configurable. And the more configurable, I suppose, is perhaps a better way of putting it because at the end of the day, these can work great, this can work great, and they are different tools. 32-bit recording, amazing. But all of these things aren't necessarily anything new. And I will just say at this point, actually, this is a gorgeous package. It comes in a hard case. We have the um, transmitters and receivers on the first shelf just there. And like every good box of chocolates, we have a second layer just here, which has lots of accessories. Um, we've got uh, cables that we'll need. We've got different options for how you're gonna clip this onto your camera or your subjects or whatever. And then a great little purple case full of uh, bits for miking. Now I will say, I'm gonna put this down over here. This is a lovely addition because the lav mics that come with this set, and I was when I was at NAB, I was like, oh my god, I need, I need those. They are great. They are tiny. They're very much like a, another similar brand of um, sub-miniature lav mics, but they're going to be so easy to hide. On top of that, they are super robust. They were showing all kinds of stress tests on these. They got the Kevlar um, cable as well, so you know. Don't garrot yourself with that. They come with some little fluffies, uh, some bits of foam, and it's nice that they're in their own small case that uh, kind of keeps everything together. Just put that off to the side there. Now that is all fantastic, but what really interested me about the system was it includes timecode. Now you're gonna say, well, Dale, there's, there's a ton of systems that have timecode built in, that's nothing new. There are lots of systems that do have timecode. Saramonic have come out with their own little timecode boxes to go on your camera or into your audio recorder. The TC Neo is uh, what they are called. They look, you know, like a little time curve box. They've got a screen on everything. Um, we've got a locking port at the top and there's a ton of different ways that you can use them. They come in this case, which is a charging case, very much like the kind of uh, little mics that I was just talking about. We have a charging case for this, nice easy way of keeping them all together, making sure they are getting charged for the next shoot. You can charge them all at the same time and you can also put them back into this case for a quick top up as well. Now, what is particularly fantastic about this, because uh, why am I so excited? The time code boxes just here, TC Neo, will talk to these with their internal time code. So you can actually have a completely uh, harmonious ecosystem. The challenge that I've found with different time code systems and different audio recording solutions or lab miking solutions is that nothing actually talks to uh, the others, albeit 
you can make things talk if you know how and if you really want to, but there is nothing which is as easy as turn them all on, go into the app and synchronize everything to a particular time code. Now the, um, the Rode Pros, as an example here, they have time code uh, potential. So you can uh, have the recordings synced between the two different um, transmitters. That's great. But then the camera isn't necessarily getting the time code. And if you want to put time code to the camera, then you have to use your receiver to put time code into your camera. And that then means that you're not monitoring in the same way that you would be monitoring if you weren't using that receiver for time code. So although you can kind of get around it, and I have done that, and it sort of works either by you know jamming the time code on the camera or by um, having just time code running into the camera and not monitoring. But not monitoring lab mics is risky. You know, it's really risky because we could be getting all kinds of rubbing like this, and we wouldn't know until we got back into the um, into the edit suite and found that it's all gone uh, completely pear shaped. So this is fantastic, and it means that now I've got 32-bit float recording at the source just here, I can be monitoring with uh, a really robust RF um, signal just here. And that has loads of nice extra bits that are designed for, you know, like, like a screen on top. It's designed for being used professionally, either if that's sitting on top of your camera, then you can see the screen on top, or if it's sitting in a, um, a bag with your recorder or um, whatever else you've got there for audio work, you know, that is gonna be sitting in your bag. You can see all of that. So it's a very neat solution. It's got all of the other things which uh, you would expect to see, you know, locking connectors on the labs. We have the aerial, which is replaceable just there. Um, obviously they include those as well. And then all of your controls are locked away you know, it's the kind of thing we've seen on professional lav systems for years. Uh, very nice metal construction just there. Feels tough, feels like it could take a, a knock and still be fine. And we also have uh, monitoring out just there as well at the source. So you could be monitoring from that um, transmitter if you wanted to. Now we'll also say that uh, the idea of replaceable batteries on this is nice because uh, if you're running sound all day, you want to just be able to switch the batteries out with something like the Rode, for example. I keep coming back to the Rode because that's ubiquitous, but any of these USB-C charging uh, lab solutions that don't have uh, interchangeable battery or not one that you can just switch out on a shoot, you're going to find that um, at a certain point in the day, you need to plug those back in. You need to get them off your talent and plugged in to be charging up to make sure that you've still got um, enough power to run your whole shoot. They do tend to last for ages, but with this, you just switch out a couple of AA batteries, which you can get practically anywhere in the world, and you're up and running again, no issues at all. It does mean that you are then managing those batteries and perhaps, perhaps, it's nice just to be able to plug everything in, like I was just praising here, you know, just plug in one USB-C cable and, and you're away in charging. But for me, for the solution that this is offering, that that's not a downside, it may even be a plus side, so I'm very excited for that. They are the only people that I'm aware of who are doing this as a complete ecosystem. There may be others, but this is the only one that I'm aware of that has time code boxes and the audio transmission and recording and all of that synced up with its own time code, which works with these on the same ecosystem. I'm very excited to put this um, out to play. They've got uh, a load of accessories that come with the TC Neos as well. So anyone who's used little time code boxes will kind of be familiar with, just grab one out just there, the um, hook and loop that comes on the back of them. And that just goes on to any hook and loop that you could put on your camera, you know, the, the softer side of it. And then that's on top. That's nice and stable, it's not gonna go anywhere. And these are actually little plates that they have, and they have a load of different varieties of that. So some of them go into cold shoe uh, receivers, some of them go into quarter 20s. They also have a load of just sticky pads that you can just stick onto a rig and then put that on. So they do give you plenty of options for how you're actually connecting that, and they kind of thought out their own ecosystem with this really well. Cabling is nice, you know, they got uh, most of your standard time code cables, uh, whether you're on BNC or 3.5, 5 mil or any of the Limo options, they have a cable that will suit that particular application. Those uh, 
boxes do also come in these little cases. Now I took two of them out because I wanted it to be a little bit more stealth on my rig, but the idea of having them in these is you know which time code box is which and which one's meant to go back on which camera, which is nice as well because then you can kind of keep everything in your brain streamlined and you know where your master clock is and you're able to keep track of all of that. Now the way that I'll probably be using this is uh, to have people mic'd up, that's time coded, audio is coming in to probably the Pixis if I'm monitoring, although potentially, you know, that might be my C70. And then these are sitting on the cameras. So one for the pocket, one for the Pixis, and then potentially one for my Zoom audio recorder as well. I could have the audio going into that, or I could have that uh, recording different audio. So maybe I'm putting a couple of plant mics around the place, and then I have this on talent and that could be time coded as well with uh, one of those time code boxes. So the whole thing should mean when I come back into DaVinci, I'm able just to grab that um, time code, sync everything up and not have to worry about how it all matches, whether we've been stopping and starting recording all day, and that will just streamline the whole thing. As you can tell, I'm quite excited about this. If you have questions, drop them down below. I'm gonna be testing this over the next month or so on some of my shoots, you know, using it for real once I've worked out how it all goes. In fact, I have taken out on one shoot already just to have a play with. So if you are thinking about getting this and you're not sure about something, maybe I can check that out when I'm testing it and uh, give you an answer. Drop them down below and uh, thanks for watching.